Aloha, folks. It's Antonio with hypnosisproductreviews.com. Today I'm interviewing, and I'm actually a little nervous. This is probably the biggest celebrity, quote unquote, funny ears celebrity. I'm interviewing David Wolf for my. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not David Wolf. I'm sorry, I messed up with the name. I'm interviewing David, uh, five octaves of my chocolate chakra wolf. Jokes aside, I've got JP Sears on the podcast. Hey Antonio, thank you for having me, uh, despite my lack of David Wolfness. But yeah, I appreciate being here uh, under this hypnotic trance you've already uh, uh, put me under. So apparently, I'm incredibly suggestible. So whatever you want me to say, I'm open to it. Okay, I'm cute. Like Antonio is a handsome uh, god, god, handsome god among men. Oh, he is totally a handsome god among men. I mean, I believe that with all my being and all the hypnotic suggestions you've given me about that, for sure. Okay, uh, now where do I send the check to? That's, yeah, there's a, a J.P. Sears, and uh, his you know, home address, I'll give that to you off there. Yeah, so you, you don't want all those women chasing you. No, I mean, that, talk about a big problem to have, a bunch of beautiful women chasing me. Like, I mean, that is, that's just one of the biggest world problems I could possibly think of. Outside of no food and no water and nuclear war, no, women chasing me might be harder to deal with a nuclear war. Nuclear war is kind of cut and dry. Yeah. It, 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 there's no color on that spectrum. It's it's kind of like it's happening and you're screwed or it's not happening. And you're not screwed. <laughs> Whereas you could, I, I, I picture the scene from, I think, in Life of Brian, where those girls are off and they're chasing that guy. I think it's Life of Brian. Life of Brian, I haven't seen that, but I'll, I will check that out so that oh, I can better wow. understand the context of that. I should almost fire you. Man, I, yeah, well, don't you have to pay me something before you fire me? But I realize there's this alleged check in the nail, but I don't know about yeah. that. You got to check, you got to check the check. So if you don't mind, can you uh, give my audience a background? Actually, let me back up a little bit. The reason that I um, sought you after, or sought after you, I think that's the word. Or, uh, the reason I reached that, out that's to you. like three words, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, the reason the reason I decided to seek you out was after watching a lot of your videos, like the gluten free, I mean, hilarious videos. I realized that you are a life coach, which I that's what I do. Well, I don't know if I can call myself a life coach, but uh, hypnosis, NLP, whatever you want to say, that really uh, it kind of it shifted the paradigm for me, considering how a lot of people in the hypnosis community, NLP community communities, the stuff that you make fun of, there's a lot of people like that in the communities. They have, they believe every kind of conspiracy theory. I used to believe conspiracy theories. I'll show you pictures later. Or maybe I'll, you know what I'll do is I'll, I'll embarrass myself. Somewhere in the screen, I'll actually put a uh, picture of my old conspiracy theory days, actually wearing a tinfoil hat. We used to have a, we used to have a, a conspiracy theory brew in view when uh, we're working. My buddy was handing us tinfoil and we would just make tinfoil hats for all the par patrons drinking so with that being said um give us uh, give my audience a background of um i guess how you came to be yeah you know outside of my parents being aroused enough to have sex with each other but fast forwarding a little bit you know for the past 15 years uh under the umbrella of life coaching um uh, i've had an emotional healing practice and yeah, i kind of consent to the term life coach but really what i do is emotional healing coaching and so I've had a busy practice for the past 15 years, and I've uh, run retreats, workshops all over the world, and uh, I do a lot of speaking and performing. And then the past uh, three years, I've had a YouTube channel, started making videos, and then two, uh, the most recent two of those past three years, I've been putting out comedy videos. And uh, the comedy videos, it's a way of me sharing my perspective through the language of humor. I think that that perspective just becomes more uh, permeable for people to consider rather than speaking towards them in a straightforward manner that just puts them under a, a trance of defense. So, uh, you it, and I've been very blessed, graced, whatever I want to call it, uh, to have a lot of recognition and opportunities come to me from the uh, comedy video. So it's really opened up some beautiful worlds. And I think the most important of which to me is this intrinsic satisfaction, kind of like an artistic satisfaction I get through uh, do, doing comedy videos and you know comedy books. I've got a book coming out uh, this coming spring. 
So there's, there's just something special that happens inside of me. It's a feeling for me yeah. when I share my perspective um, through the language of humor. And humor is something you're pretty good at. I don't know if, you, if you're aware of it, but you got a knack for it. Oh, well, thank you for being delusional enough to think so, Antonio. Um, but I, I appreciate that. And I realize humor is always in the eye of the beholder. And it, it does mean a lot to me when be, uh, beholders with the eye for my humor uh, uh, find some kind of value in it. It does mean a lot to me. And uh, there's a part of me that's been kind of a comedian, had a sense of humor ever since I was a little kid. It was a way I dealt with pain. Let me make people laugh so that I can feel significant temporarily in, you know, escape my sense of insignificance that I didn't know how to deal with directly. And uh, apparently there's a light side of humor as well, where it can be a source of levity and I think self-realization. And hopefully that's mostly what it's used for in my present day life. By the way, conspiracy theories, Antonio, not to digress. I have a theory that conspiracy theories are designed to work against us. So it's like I think conspiracy theories are conspiring against us. You and I might need to talk about that more off air so we can consider like what we need to do about that. But I couldn't help but share that with you. Okay, um, we'll, we'll dive into that because I, I guarantee you it'll be a nice like, half-hour talk. Well, if the first half hour will only take about 30 minutes, but then okay. there's another nine hours of forensic details we've got to go through, you know, the fake moon landing, the flat earth for sure. So, yeah, we've got some details to cover. I don't know, flat, I love flat earth. <laughs> oh, man, it's like, I mean, it's like, I can, it's like, you can, I've gone skydiving and I've seen the bubble. I'm like, how do you describe it? Here's how you, here's the reason for that, Antonio. Your eyes are round, not flat. Therefore, oh. you're looking through a round prism, so things look round even though they're not round because they're flat. Uh, I, I just, I think it was like two Damn days ago. Damn you, science lying to us. Yeah. Two days ago, I put out an ultra-spiritual video on the flat earth theory. So that's going to be a good source whoa, of education whoa, 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 we'll for to generations can, to come. You can pitch your videos in a second. Settle no, down. I want shameless promotions now, Antonio. Settle down, Kevin Tudo. <laughs> Speaking of... I digress. It's so good to see that guy finally in prison. Is he in prison? Yeah. Oh, he's, oh you know, what? What did he get locked away for? Uh, he was basically he was selling his book. Uh, he made thirty-seven million dollars on a, a weight loss book. People try to say the government went after him for freedom of speech, but it's one thing if you're mis if you're deliberately misleading people yeah. and selling under false pretenses. So he had the I think the FTC. Um, Something I think the FTC wanted him to pay back all that money. He's like, no, what? screw you. I'm not going to pay the money back. And, and I'm getting 10 years. Well, so that was some kind of misrepresented information in his book about weight loss? No, he was, um, he was I think it was, i got to look back. I think he was using misleading claims in, the, um, in his infomercials. Okay. Yeah, he had, he had a bunch of shady stuff. Anyhow, I digress. That'll be another video. Maybe, maybe I'll get the Kevin Trudeau in prison special. Maybe. How's the food in there, Kevin? It's not very good. <laughs> uh, kind of sucks. You know, the, ca the caviar is bland. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, and by caviar, I mean moldy fish sticks. That was yeah. gonna say, um, I was going to say something. Hmm. Let me see. Drink some of this magical remembering water. Yeah, let's see. We were on moon landings, we were on humor. Okay, that's about, about humor. Um, <laughs> uh, before this podcast started, we were uh, having a little uh, chit-chat about how a lot of uh, scientists type don't... It's hard for them to fathom some kind of therapies, maybe if it's like hypnosis, NLP, uh, mindfulness, anything like that, because the, a lot of scientists are very objective. Very yeah. objective. Like you say, like, um, this, uh, uh, no gray areas black, white, where therapy is very subjective. A lot of, I mean, I've gone to therapy. It's been a long time ago because I don't need to anymore. It's not perfect. But with therapy, it's um, it's very subjective. Sure. I've, um, I was actually at a hypnosis conference uh, about, a, about a month ago, and my friend Ken Guzzo, if you're watching this, Ken, thank you. I'm still feeling awesome from the session. He used a lot of humor. He was, you know, um, he was doing something with... Uh, 
NLP and hypnosis, he was getting me into a, um, a really good state. He had me running through an exercise, so I, I felt fantastic. So at one point, in front of a group of like 50 people, he was like, how do you feel? I'm like, I feel pretty damn good. He's like, okay, stop. He's like, he's like, I don't want you to feel good. Which is, when it's said in a way, in a joking manner, it, it's like, okay, good. Because yeah. then I realized, like, I can control this myself. Yeah, we need, yeah. You need humor in therapy. But the right kind of humor. You don't want to just like laugh and point. Yeah, I agree. Humor can be used to escape ourselves, which I think is the opposite of healing. Humor can be used to belittle ourselves. And I think humor can be used to connect to ourselves and to interrupt old patterns. I think humor is a prime pattern interrupt. Um, And yeah, I think it has incredible value, especially just like you said, when you can acknowledge like the shadow side of humor, using humor as a way of actually blocking intimacy, blocking connection, blocking self-introspection. But if it's there to complement it, um, interrupt old patterns that we're looking to break free of. And yeah, I I would dare say humor is uh, uh, it's a tool in the tool chest of healing for sure. Now I was gonna say with the um, with humor, how how did if you don't mind me asking, how did you develop your humor or your own brand of humor? Yeah, uh, I mentioned I believe I mentioned when I was in childhood I would use humor to escape from pain, so that started yep. to sharpen my uh, samurai sort of humor. So I, I just start reading people, you know, figured out. I think part of it's intuitive, part of it is observational where I figure out what's going to make a person laugh. Uh, and, you know, where can I go with, that, with taking the person towards their line but not crossing the line? Because, of course, I think the closer we take a person to their line, the funnier something is. But, of course, if we cross the line, then it's not funny anymore. It's, I'm offended. Um, so I think being a student of other people, observing, connecting to other people has been very important to uh, teach me about humor. I, uh, really, this sounds a little airy-fairy because it is, yet I believe it anyway. I do believe people energetically teach us uh, what will be funny to them. And if we observe them and kind of tune into them, I think they teach us what's going to be um, funny to them. So now getting kind of practical, in 2005, 2006, I started teaching these three-day uh, weekend-long uh, holistic uh, health, nutrition, stress reduction workshops. Uh, I was uh, a faculty member for uh, what's called the Czech Institute Holistic Exercise Nutrition Company in Southern California. So I'd go around these different locations around the world and uh, around the country. So for three days, long days, like I don't know, 9, 10, 11 hours a day, uh, I'm there speaking to people about really great information, useful information, powerful information, but the information is boring as hell especially after my hundredth time teaching this three-day-long workshop. So, like, I don't want to listen to someone talk about something, even if it's informative and valuable. I want to listen to someone talk for three days. So uh, I started to learn how to uh, present the information in an interesting way, and that was just using humor. So... I started to realize, like, okay, if I say something ridiculous, but I say it with a straight face, that amuses the hell out of me. Like, first and foremost, I was like, I need to entertain myself over yeah. the next three days. So I would be absolutely amused. So I'd say something ridiculous with a straight face, and I'd watch it. It was very consistent. About a, the third of a room full of people were just, like, shocked. Like, this guy's serious about that. What the hell? And then another third was absolutely amused. They, they were in on it. They saw the, the dry humor and that I'm kidding. And then uh, the middle third of the class was absolutely confused. And it would usually take about three hours for the whole class to sink in and realize, all right, this redheaded jerk actually has a sense of humor. And he says ridiculous things and he's joking. So, you know, I would in a way sugarcoat and surround uh, the great health information I was teaching with entertainment, uh, which is comedy. And I do find, you know, kind of through those, you know, the, the, I think it was seven years I was teaching for this institute. So I'm in front of people 
all the time for long periods of time. So it was a lot of practice. It was a great training ground to further sharpen my samurai sword of humor and essentially get instant feedback. Are people laughing? If not, okay, that's teaching me this angle of humor isn't funny. Are people laughing? They are laughing. That's reaffirming, okay, this is a kind of a neurological pathway of humor that works. Uh, so that was absolutely um, great training ground. Uh, it really was. And I, there was another point I was going to make, but uh, forgot what the hell I was going to say. But yeah, nonetheless, that was very valuable um, training for humor, actually. You know, a lot of, um, a lot of trainers have been to uh, this one con uh, conference, Hypno Thoughts Live. It's every August for the past four years in Las Vegas. And the one thing I like about it is it's, a, it's non-denominational. Meaning it's not like a certain organization. It's people from all different organizations. So you get different training styles. I mean, you get some people. I've seen uh, this past this past conference. I was lucky enough to not see a single bad um, talk. Before a couple of years before, I've, I had some talks that were kind of boring. But the thing is, like, I love trainers that have a great sense of humor. Yeah, there's some people out there that you know what it is. It's so um, this is the theory I've heard. In the how while well, theories hold up in the real world, how dopamine, when dopamine's released, when you're laughing, it's just easier to it's easier to learn. When you're having fun, it's so much easier to learn. Man, I I agree with that, and I personally think one of the prime states to be in to learn is a state where we don't know we're learning. I think that's when we learn the most. And if you know, even though we know, like I'm in this conference, this lecture, in order to learn. But in the moment, if you know we're hit with a joke or something humorous, it, it takes us, I think, into a on, almost a higher state, state of playfulness. And it's just like a child out there playing. They're learning more than they do in the classroom. In the classroom, oh, yeah. okay, I'm in this serious environment, and I'm told I'm supposed to be learning. And yeah, you learn stuff. But I, I agree when you know when there's humor involved. It changes things because first and foremost, we don't think I'm here learning. We're focusing on something else and maybe hypnotic induction. The other information I think can just go in deeper. You know what it is? It's, uh, we, it's almost like learning at two levels. There's one thing to learn. Yeah. It's hard for me. I, I don't see myself on the screen, so I don't know if you got my good side. Actually, I think the back the good side is what, the back of my head. <laughs> but it's, it's one thing to learn real heady, but it's another thing to learn. Like, have that, that full body immersion. For sure. Absolutely. It becomes visceral. And you mentioned that, you know, the dopamine, the neurotransmitters. When you get those involved, I mean, hell, that's full physiology, mind-body learning, if you ask me. It's all about getting mind-body. Yeah, so when are you going to, um, you ever been out to Kauai before? I love Kauai. I was just there uh, this past January over New Year's. I was there for 10, maybe 14 days. I was there uh, near the end of 2013 as well. Uh, and someone was just asking me recently, JP, where's your favorite place you have ever traveled? And I've been very fortunate to travel to many beautiful places. Kauai is my answer. Okay, so when you come out here again, we're gonna, uh, we can do a workshop, if you don't mind. Surfing. <laughs> surfing. I, don't, gotcha. I don't need. I don't need those those uh, those hordes of women running to the house. I I understand that would be a a burden on you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sc all these scorned women. <laughs> I'll just sleep in my hammock on the beach. Yeah. So, what are some what are some of the biggest things I think that you've learned for yourself, or maybe uh, shifts you've made in yourself working with people? Yeah, you know, humbleness is a big one. Uh, and how humble of me to tell you that I'm humble. I'm actually the most humble person I know. I usually don't like to brag about it because I'm too humble to talk about can, my humble. I can see that. <laughs> but honestly, humbleness is a big one because, you know, I've been privileged to work with thousands of people who open the doors of their heart uh, uh, with me. It really is a great honor. And I find that with each of these people... They're here to, I, I look at people as my mirrors. So in that context, they're here to teach me something I don't know about myself. 
So each client is showing me some kind of unresolved wound or unresolved belief I have about myself that needs attention. So while, while I might not have been through the exact literal experience that this client has, though sometimes I have, I've been through my version of it, at least symbolically. What, like what does their experience represent to me? Where is that in my life? Oh, yeah, there it is. And I think there's far more to me than what I believe there is about me. I think mean, who we are is far more than we can consciously comprehend. And I think what we don't know about ourselves tends to control us. So uh, when I have the humbleness to realize I still have a shitload to learn about myself, then then that allows me to dive into my heart in, way, in directions that I wouldn't know how to go in if I didn't have a a client sitting in front of me or a, you know, a, a retreat participant. So yeah, humbleness and kind of like the beginner's mindset to me is huge. Open, and, like, like the open mindset. Absolutely. I, I think the words I know are some of the most uh, disastrous words in our language. Uh, I think when we say, I know, I know about me, I think what we're really saying is, uh, I am defended about discovering more the mystery of me. I am afraid of discovering how much I don't know about me. So to me, the beginner's mind, being a curious student of our own life and realizing that what we know about ourself is simply what we think we know about ourself. And I think there's very little correlation between certainty and truth. I think certainty has a high correlation to making us feel comfortable and safe, but not necessarily any correlation to truth, a high correlation to what we believe is true, but not necessarily the truth. So in with that, the, the beginner's mind and humbleness, I would also say that vulnerability has to be there as a prime lesson that I've learned uh, uh, for a, you know, living a, what I would call an empowered life. Okay, sweet, sweet. It's funny, um, you know, we're talking about pattern interrupts, which I you being around therapy, I'm sure you've heard about pattern interrupts. There's so many different ways to do them. Uh, what my day job, what I do is I do um, I do timeshare or uh, you know slime share, crime share, whatever the hell you want to call it. I um, our job is basically to pull people in our in our booth and sell them on an activity, and then give them the option to do a time or give them the option to do a timeshare. Yeah. What I, what I do now is I have a. Um, a Halloween bucket and sitting in front of the booth with a sign that says, um, adults only free take one, it points down. And it's a piece of paper. They pull it out. It says, um, I tell them it's a, it's a raffle. But they open it up and it says, you win one free timeshare presentation. Of course you wouldn't want to win that. And then they laugh, they laugh and they're like, they're like, wait, what That's is this? Good. And then on the bottom it, it says, uh, present this to the handsome and humble guy in front of you. So <laughs> great pattern interrupts. And then what happens is they actually they'll actually bring it in the booth, and then some people don't realize, and then they're like, "Oh my god!" They're like, a lot of people tell me they're like, "Wow, that that's brilliant." They're like, I would have never walked in your booth if you tried to pull me. And I'm like, exactly. It's my yeah. it's my humbleness. That you know, that's my little bit of humbleness. Oh, I love it, and I love the humor involved with that too. Oh, I, you gotta have you gotta have fun. Like yeah. When I when I used to drink, I actually quit drinking uh, with the use of self hypnosis um, two months ago, I think. When I used right, to drink, congratulations. Thanks. What I what I used to do uh, when I was still drinking, and if I had some customers that were just just angry on vacation, I don't understand how you'd be angry on vacation, especially here. I would I would um, tell people, I'm like, look, I don't care if you're gonna have fun on vacation on your vacation. I'm gonna have fun on your vacation. I'm gonna get drunk on your vacation. So <laughs> buckle up, buckle up, Buttercup, have fun. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think humor, I mean, man, uh, we don't need to become manic and laugh 24 hours a day. But man, that it, I, to me, humor is a force of levity. And we know, we all know about gravity, like we need gravity. It's important. Bones just disintegrate without it. But too much gravity, man. Are you that sure drops. that that's, uh, <laughs> that might be just a theory, just like flat earth? Yeah, well, well played. Is there really gravity? You can't prove there's gravity, and that actually proves that there's not gravity. The fact oh, that you great. Prove it. You know there's going to be somebody to watch this and be like, oh, my God, there's not gravity. Just like all the morons believe that there's a Hillary Clinton um, body double now because, you know, the fan, somebody's like, I was like, do you really believe that? 
Not only do I believe that, Antonio, but I've got my body double talking to you right now. This isn't really me. It's my body double. Because you're that important, right? you got a couple of people. Pretty much. Absolutely. Well, it's not, it's not like they had, to, they had to drum up a lot of melatonin for this or anything. <laughs> you, ever, you, ever, you ever called Daywalker? Daywalker, uh, not that I, not that I've ever paid attention to. No. Okay, so you, you know, I might put a little subtitle, uh, put a subtitle for Daywalker. Daywalker. <laughs> I forget. I think it's from South Park. Okay, let's see. We covered a good amount. Um, let's see. Uh, what other, uh, what other kind of things you have going on in your life, projects or anything? Yeah, th- there, there's a lot of things. Um, uh, I mentioned. I believe I mentioned. I've got a book coming out um, this March. It's called How to Be Ultra Spiritual, 12 and a Half Steps to Spiritual Superiority. That'll be published with Sounds True. That's been such an enjoyable project. Um, a lot of focus and energy into it, but a beautiful and enjoyable project. Um, there's uh, Recently, I signed uh, also with a production company where we'll develop a TV show based on my ultra-spiritual character. And, That's um, awesome. Yeah, and, you know, no guarantee it'll be uh, picked up by a network or Netflix people who buy uh, companies that buy shows. Or a cable uh, broadcast, public broadcast. Absolutely. So... I am, um, you know, we're in the beginning stages of that, that development, but I'm, I'm going all in with the intention of I'm here to learn something. I'm here to have an enjoyable experience. If the show becomes a, a show that's picked up, it's a great bonus. But it is a valuable experience uh, for me nonetheless. That's why I'm looking at it. And uh, So other projects, I've got a, a lot of of uh, speaking at different events and conferences that I've been doing and performing and a lot of that coming up. Um, Let's see. I I think I'm probably missing some projects, you know, along with uh, other videos I'm doing. But, um, and we're already looking for, you know, what's book number two going to be about. So, man, there is, um, there's enough going on that sometimes my head spins but you know what? I like my head spinning. It's sometimes fun to be dizzy. Exactly. So if you have so many projects going on, well, for me, I can't have too many projects going on because, like I mentioned earlier, freaking shiny red ball. You know, <laughs> uh, I'm just lucky. You know what? I'm just not using my peripheral vision right now because if, if there's anything running past me, anything falling, I'm done. So what's in that magical concoction? Is it a David Wolf special? Yeah, this Crown, is um, crowned up deer antlers. You know, I think he would approve because the first ingredient in this um it's still purple so it doesn't look too gross yet. First ingredient is avocado. Uh then I've got a bunch of blue <coughs> excuse me. David avocado wolf, a bunch of blueberries, some frozen strawberries, uh a whey protein powder and a bunch of cinnamon and then some alkalinized water. Okay. Okay, so I know a lot of, I know some science folks are gonna freak out about the alkalinized water. <laughs> I think the science might still be out on that, so we'll, we're not gonna get too far into that. Yeah, you know, I'm using it by default. I've got two great friends of mine that are staying at my house, uh, beautiful husband and wife team, very near and dear to my heart. But they have one of these fancy alkalinizing water machines. Um, that it better do something because it costs them four or five grand. But anyway, yeah. they've got that hooked up in my house, and I'm like, oh, it's here. I'm going to use it. I, I don't know that I have much belief about it one way or another, but I'm like, oh, let's go with it. Long time when in Rome. Yeah, when in Rome. Oh, oh my God, the city's falling apart. No, when, uh, years ago, I was uh, I had a uh, hangover. The restaurant I was working at, this guy would give me some alkalized water, and then after like an hour, I'm like, "Oh my god, my hangover's gone!" I was like, "Oh yeah, it's called time." I was like, "Oh my god, it's getting rid of my hangover." It's time and basic hydration, yeah. Exactly. Um, so with your your therapy practice, or I don't know if we can call it therapy. A lot of a lot of people get mad, like, "Oh, it's not really therapy." Whatever, counseling, spiritual guidance, whatever the hell you want to call it. What what different um methodologies do you draw from? Yeah, you know, the the first, to give you a non-specific answer, the most important methodology is connecting to the person. 
heart to heart. I have no agenda of what this person needs to do uh, because that's for them to determine. So I'm there to connect and become a student of what do they need. You know, listen to what they say they want, but really listen to what they don't know how to say that they actually need inside. I think most people are aware of this. And so deep connection, listening, hearing, certainly some intuition is a part of that. And then methodologies from there that I'll uh, employ a lot of inner child work, some uh, gestalt looking techniques, some family constellation looking stuff, um, uh, probably little bits of uh, NLP. I'm by no means um, super trained. I've been exposed to some techniques. And uh, typically I let you know all those sorts of things and probably some others that I've learned, they go into my toolbox and uh, I think they kind of... Um, uh, become a little bit of an alchemy mix of things where I very rarely anymore, I used to do it a lot, but I very rarely have the uh, perception anymore of, oh, uh, Gestalt right now, let's use Gestalt or let, yeah, let's use uh, this family constellation technique. Typically, it's kind of like some kind of eclectic hybrid, um, which I'm okay with. That actually is, is taking me some... Uh, evolving into, um, you know, kind of doing things, discovering my way rather than being just blindly loyal to exactly the way I learned things. Um, so good luck getting an answer out of whatever I just rambled about. That's my thoughts. Yeah, I'll figure something out. So uh, any, any, any time in the future you can use some good old aversion shock therapy? Aversion, I, I'm looking to get a... Uh, yeah, some kind of solar-powered electric shock machine for my place because I don't want my electric bill to go up because I would need to be shocking people and you're, and you're often. you're conscious, right? Absolutely, and environmentally conscious. So let's electrocute people using solar power. Totally. Now, <laughs> there's actually it's, a main... It's ridiculous we haven't been doing this yet. Yeah, exactly. But come on, come on, world leaders. Um, <laughs> so bad. I was gonna say, oh, so I uh, somewhere on this picture, or I don't know, over your face somewhere, I'll um, show a picture that I've used. Um, I think it's a picture of Deepak Chopra where I have a funny little thing about opening the butthole chakra, <laughs> just just to really, I use it to really make fun of people that are. Because I have a lot of friends on Facebook that are very, they share all the motivational stuff. They act like Namaste, I'm of the highest Buddha order, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's like, no, you're not. If you're, if you're, you know, you get it. If you're trying to show your, yourself that way. You're not yeah. that enlightened. Yeah. Now, now, um, how would you encourage my audience to open the butthole chakra? <laughs> Man, first off, call it the butthole chakra. That is step number one. Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> but to open the butthole chakra. Man, that was a pattern interrupt for me. Um, to me, it's. I almost spit my water out. What's important for me is to realize the path I take to find myself can and probably will eventually become a path I lose myself on. Uh, what, In other words, what works for us initially can start to work against us, or at least uh, we'll have some developed kind of shadow aspects that, c that can work against us, kind of like you mentioned, like, okay, I got into spirituality, and now I f have the egotistical need to you know, say namaste to everybody so they know how damn spiritual I am. So I just love the you know, to because, you know, we live in a relative world, allegedly, which I do believe. So if something has the power to help us and work for us, great, let's keep that in our life. And my invitation is to also be aware of the shadow side of it. Because I think like the shadow side, which might be you know, self-gratification or belittling others or trying to be superior to others, uh, I think that becomes minimized when we're aware of it. I think it becomes maximized when we're unaware of it. And when we're unaware of it, we, uh, my experience is I tend to do more of it when I'm unaware of it. But once we're aware, it's like we can get out of the jail. Like Ram Dass uh, uh, said, you can't get out of the jail that you don't know you're in. So, you know, knowing what's, in, knowing what's inside of our butthole chakra is a good start. Yeah, you, you got to click. You know, the butthole chakra needs to be cleansed. <laughs> Perfect. Chakra colonics. 
dude, when I, when I first made that meme and I thought, I'm like, oh my god, the butthole shine. Sometimes I got a little hamster wheel in my head. Sometimes, sometimes there's there's not the filter of what I should say, and some things just come out. I'm like, but you know what? That's that's comedy. Oh, absolutely. More unfiltered, the better. But sometimes I say things and I'm like, oh. Actually, speaking of funny, remember I was telling you how we used to do the um, the Tim Fall hats, so and I'll show another picture of it. So we we did this when we were in uh, when I lived in Detroit, uh, originally from Michigan, and of course Detroit it's let's say ninety five percent black. So we're in this horseshoe bar. Um, I don't think there was any blacks in the bar at the time. We, it's just uh, it's not that we said no blacks allowed. It wasn't like that. But this couple came in. So we had a bunch of people, a bunch of um, I'm Mexicans, uh, uh, a couple Mexicans, a lot more white people wearing tinfoil hats. Some of them were really pointy. You can see where this is going. Uh, and they walk in. I'm scared and, already. Oh, uh, they walk in, and I was like, they're looking at me like, oh my god, what's going? And I tried to, scratch, and I was a little buzz. I'm like, look, I'm like, it's it's not what you think. I'm like, I'm like, what it is is we're keeping out the alien mind control rays. And they look at me even crazier. You, at me. you would have been better off just a uh, clan rally. That's what we do. They're like, uh, they're like, hey, you know, they're like, actually, they're like, we're going to go to the Klan rally down the street. You guys are a little too crazy for us. <laughs> it's funny, like, how, you know, especially in therapy, um, a uh, certain kind of therapy, it's good uh, storytelling. It's really powerful. Metaphors, all that. Sometimes I think, I'm like, I don't have any good stories. And I think about that. That's a great story to tell. Yeah, for sure. I just got to find the correct context. <laughs> the the tinfoil hat bar story. That is a great story, for sure. Oh. We, I remember once we had this um, I was uh, bar back, and this girl came up, uh, redhead dog, uh, really cute, really cute. Sorry, you, you don't really, not my type of redhead. Anyhow, girl walks up to the bar. This girl, you're like, I'm offended. This girl walks up to the bar, and she sees us all wearing tinfoil hats. She's like, why are you guys wearing tinfoil hats? I'm nice and buzz. I look at her, I was like, to keep up the alien mind control rays. It's a deadpan, and she's like, Really? Does a head tell? I was like, oh god. I was like, never mind. I was like, what? Was like, girls, if you do the, huh? the head tilt, <laughs> that sh- it shows like a lack of common sense, intelligence. <laughs> I couldn't say anything to her. Like after that, I was like, wow, this is bad. So I'm gonna have to watch my really head tilt because I think I probably play that one dozens of times a day. But um, appreciate the we- tip. But see, yeah, you, that's one thing you do when you, you act ultra spiritual in your videos. Like, really? Yeah, the first time I saw the gluten video, I was like, what is, holy shit. A lot of, I have a, a science community on the island. We have, um, we'll basically, uh, we haven't done it in a while, we'll hang out, go to the bar, um, laugh at all the plebs and that have all their, their flat earth theories. Yeah. But it, it's kind of good having, having that community of, of like-minded people. And at the same at the same time, some of them are so analytical they don't understand like certain kind of therapy. It's like, well, yeah, get get with the program. We're all, we're more than just we're more than just mind, mind and body, uh, one system. Yeah, you know that's my opinion too. We're more than what science can measure. We're more than what our five senses can detect and therefore what we can measure. And to me, that's actually part of the beauty of life, the mystery. I think science is all about certainty and like making things non-mystery. And that's beautiful. That's like half the yin yang. But like, yeah, there's mystery. There's a quote I heard recently and I absolutely forget who said it. So screw giving credit to the author. We'll, we'll, We'll scrap it to you. Yeah, uh, so J.P. Sears once said uh, in a conversation with Antonio that life is not a puzzle to be solved. It's not a question to be answered. It's a mystery to be experienced. And, like, I don't know what it is about that, but that just feels good in me. And that feels like a good north star to um, have in my sky. It really does. And I think the the unfortunate reality of... uh, Science, when it becomes dogmatic, is it, those folks turn their back on things that are a mystery. And I think there's so much beauty to experience in mystery. Not beauty to measure, not beauty to analyze, yeah. but beauty to experience. It's that heartfelt experience. Yeah, absolutely. 
Man, so we've been rambling on for close to an hour. Let's see, I think we covered everything. We covered your humbleness, <laughs> um, your altruistic nature. What else? Man, I think I, I think I was a little nervous to interview you. That went out the window. As soon as you started talking, I'm like, ha, oh, that makes me sound like a freaking genius. Well, it's be- <laughs> no, well, it's not that. It's because my presence is so healing. It just healed your nervousness. We'll, we'll go with that. Yeah, that's, that's the one we're going with, yeah. Uh, let's see, so if people want to find you. Yeah, the best place to find me, you know, Facebook or YouTube, uh, all my social media is Awaken with JP. So uh, you're welcome to connect with me there. I'm putting out new stuff, new videos all the time. I just put out a new video today. And, of course, if you find me repulsive and offensive, then be sure to avoid anything Awaken with JP online. Okay, it's like, do not think of a black hat. Do not contact me. Yeah, uh, did I just use reverse psychology on people, Antonio? Possibly. Let's see. So, awakenwithjp.com? Yeah. Oh, um, you know, there's going to be so many science folks who are going to be like, oh, he's talking. Like, oh, my God, you know, the sheeple, awakened sheeple. <laughs> I, I am now awoke. You can't really tell. Um, but this right here, the, if this gets any brighter, my third eye is going to blur out the camera. Yeah, I actually, I've had to dim my computer screen because of um, the luminosity, if you will, of your third eye. It's just ridiculously indigo. Okay, I'm one of those indigo child. I like, That's such a special thing. Like, you know, parents are like, my kid's an indigo child. Whether well, they explain why he can't keep still and running around, he has no discipline. And if you notice... <laughs> How, how many? Okay, I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break. Uh, this isn't the fourth wall. No, this is called breaking out of whatever. How many times do you see a a non-white couple call their kids an indigo child? <laughs> Probably not often. Not often at all. Call it is what it is. What it is. It's like my my kid's special. He's an indigo child. No, he isn't. <laughs> your your child spits on other kids and can't learn. That doesn't mean he's an indigo child. Uh, he's a genius. I'm like, nope. He's he's so intelligent that he can't make himself dumb enough to figure out how to answer the test <laughs> questions correctly. He's a genius. Indigo oh, child. He's a crystal oh. child too. He's like well, both of them. Oh god, this, this has been actually a really good talk. I actually, I've uh, got some good amount of humor. Now I can go into work and have to deal with a bunch of. Tourists that are mad that they're on vacation. <laughs> well, cool, brother. So, well, enjoy that. And yeah, thank you so much for having me on your lovely offering to the world. It's been a blast talking with you, Antonio. And I'm also grateful to know that you are in the world uh, offering peel, uh, people empowerment. Peeling, peel, I'm, peeling, I'm, peel, I'm peeling people peel, apart. Peeling, peeling like an layers onion. back. Peeling layers off. back. Absolutely. So you're doing good work, my friend. I'm glad we're walking the earth at the same time. Thank you. I was a JP uh, chocolate octave of the sharp wolf. You've seen that video, right? <laughs> I don't think so, but that term is just funny. Oh no, um, David Wolf. He was talking about how like cho- it's a weird video. He's talking about like gravity isn't real, and how uh, it's a video. He's talking about um, what's it called? The um, chocolate is like a fifth octave of the sun energy. Some Crazy oh, shit. Wow, that's that's radical. Chocolate's a fifth octave of the sun. It, no, you'll watch it. You'll be like, wow. You, you, and he also believes that, uh, what's that thing called? How, um, the, you know the thing you talk about gravity and water? He's like, the reason the oceans don't, fall, don't float away is because salt. Because salt makes them not float away because of gravity. I was like, no, that doesn't quite work. Yeah, that doesn't explain the lakes, but I'm sure there's another explanation for the freshwater lakes. Sure. Anyhow, we, we can do this. We can do another podcast. If anybody likes this or hates it, uh, if you got a good laugh, um, leave a comment. Okay, i got to hit my stop recorder.